Hello everyone. Today I am going to talk about Disco Diffusion and how to use it with a video input. Um, I did this animation and shared it on Reddit and uh, got a lot of people asking how I did it, if I can make a tutorial. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna talk a little bit of what I did with Disco Diffusion and then how I used those visuals to put it into After Effects and create what I created here. Um, and I just wanna clarify that I am not an expert at coding, I'm not an expert at Disco Diffusion. There's actually another video that uh, I just wanna give a shout out to this person because I watched this video and it taught me a lot. Common Sense Made Simple. Uh, you can actually watch that video if you'd like. And uh, um, I say just watch it anyways, anything you can watch it's going to teach you something new um, because there's not a lot of information out there on uh, AI with video in this way. There's a lot of stuff on animations that were generated but not using actual video. So I want to uh, talk a little bit about how I created this. Like I said, I'm not an expert, but I will show you what I did, the steps I took to make something like this. And hopefully you can make something cool too. Okay, so before we get started, the first thing we need to get familiar with is Google Colab. So this is really what you use to generate AI videos and animations, 2D animations, uh, some of the stuff you might have seen already out there. Google Colab basically, from what I understand, it's like uh, a remote computer that you're using. But the free version pretty much is slow. It doesn't really uh, allow you to let it generate the AI animation on its own. You have to be basically there. If you leave the computer idle, then it will a message will pop up and say like, we have to end the session or something like that. If you're gonna be taking this serious, uh, then I would not recommend the free version. If you're just gonna try it out, test it out to see if you like it, if you're into it, then that's a good way to go just to get started. Uh, the Colab Pro, it has better features, it's a little bit faster, uh, more memory, um, and uh, longer run times. Um, uh, and then obviously the better one, which is the most expensive, is the Colab Pro Plus, which is $50 per month. Um, the cool thing about this is that if you have these really long videos that you wanna you know, generate AI for, then this can be done in the background. You can essentially let it run and then walk away. And then, uh, for example, leave it overnight and then the next day you come and it's done. Hopefully, depending on your settings and how long the video is. But uh, I think the there is a limit to 24 hours. So you uh, get to choose those. So we start off, uh, here you can I'll put the link in the description or you can Google this. Uh, this is the there's different versions of Disco Diffusion that people have made. This is the one I use and I like. Uh, you click on it, it will bring you into this screen, and then uh, from here is where you uh, start to put all the settings. Uh, at first, it looks a little bit intimidating, but um, yeah, you just come all the way down. I would recommend tutorial this little tutorial thing. Uh, there's a link right here to Zippy Disco Diffusion Cheat Sheet. It's this. And uh, I would recommend you read through this or either come here for references. There's a lot of things that uh, will explain some of the things I will go through. And I'll show you some examples of how this can be super useful. So you go in here. Uh, but first, the first thing you got to do when you come in here is save it. Save a copy in Drive in your Google Drive. So when you do that, it will save a copy. It will open another window. You can close this old window. And then you have this copy, even says copy up here. And you can name it whatever you want. Um, and from here, it will allow you to upload videos and, and yeah, basically generate the AI for it. The first thing you wanna do is come all the way down. There's these little play buttons and they're here too. These are all individual play buttons. If you click this, when if you close this tab and you press this 
button right here. It will essentially press play in all of these. So I press setup. When you press this little play button, it will start to process. And you'll see this little, almost like a loading animation. Yeah, right there. Then it's gonna ask you to connect with your Google Drive. So you connect to Google Drive, you press connect, you click on the account you wanna to connect to, and then you press allow. And then it will connect, this will take some time. Um, while that's happening, uh, I'll show you this. This, from what I understand, is essentially where the AI draws information to create the animations. So, uh, I believe these will give you different results. Um, I don't know exactly what each one does, but I just know that basically they all give you different results. The problem if you start to click on a lot of these is that it's it becomes too much um, and it just uh, ends your session and it will cancel it and you know it can load for a few frames and then it just stops. So I, I would try to start low and then as you know, maybe you can experiment yourself. I I just leave it as is, the way it is. Just those three click. Um, and so as that loading, I can load this other one. Just load. And this, I'm not sure what it does either. I just press there and it's loading. Um, down here is really where the, as those are loading, I'll explain this other thing, the settings. This is where pretty much the meat of everything is. Um, this is the name of where the folder where everything's going to be saved. So I'll pretty much just put tests uh, YouTube. Steps is pretty much um, how much each iteration of that frame is going to be guided, basically. And uh, it's going to be guided based on the prompt. And I will explain what the prompt is because that's going to come up later. The prompt is basically a description of what you want the video to become essentially through basically what you want the AI to create with the video, like what imagery. So if you put, for example, in the prompt, mechanical steampunk city, steampunk aesthetic kind of thing, then you put that in the prompt and then the AI will try to be guided by that. So th the more steps you put, the more it will lean towards that prompt but also i believe if you go too high on the steps it will start to distort the video too much and so you kind of want to find a good number in which it just fits for what you're doing um so i would say you know i stay between 300 200 uh never go too i never really go too high because plus also the more steps you add the slower the longer it will take to to finish the video Width and height, um, this is the highest I've gone. I believe that if you go too high also, it will also have issues and it will stop your session. So I would just stay around this number or you can go uh, a one by one frame, whichever, like a 500 by 500 or something. Um, but this is what I like for a wide uh, 16 by nine frame. So uh, clip guidance scale, uh, if we go here to the cheat sheet, it says, it's one of the most important parameters you will use. It tells Disco Diffusion how strongly you want clip to move towards your prompt each time step. Higher is generally better, but if CGS is too strong, it will overshoot the goal and distort the image. So happy medium is needed. Uh, and it takes experience to learn how to adjust. So yeah, this is, Basically, the higher the number, the more it will lean towards uh, your prompt. And you can just start with what I started. I don't know if this number is a good number. I just, yeah, it gives me decent results. So TV scale is basically it uh, denoiser, I believe. If used, TV scale would try to smooth out your final image to reduce overall noise. If your image is too crunchy, increase TV scale. Uh, TV discoise, uh, this noising is good at preserving edges while smoothing away noise in flat regions. So, yeah. Um, does it say? Yeah. So the higher it is, the more it will denoise. Range scale, set to zero to turn off. Used for adjustment of color contrast, lower range scale will increase contrast. Very low numbers create a reduced color palette, resulting in a more vibrant or poster-like image. 
higher range scale will reduce contrast for more muted images. So the lower, the more muted, the higher, the more colorful, like this is high, so you see a lot of color here. And uh, yeah, it can look cool, but it can be much sometimes. So, you know, just play around with that. I have it at, at 195. Uh, saturated scale. If use a saturation scale will help mitigate oversaturation. If your image is too saturated, increase that scale to reduce the saturation. Yeah. Uh, and cut in batches. The higher the number for this, the longer it will take to process your animation. So it says here, each iteration, the AI cuts the image into smaller pieces known as cuts and compares each cut to the prompt to decide how to guide the next diffusion step. More cuts can generally lead to better images since disco diffusion has more chances to fine tune the image position in each time step. So essentially it can be a better, a good thing to increase it um, as high as eight, but um, obviously it'll take longer. To start off, I would just start with one and then just, if you need, if you really wanna just see what it does with higher numbers, you can try that. Uh, I leave all this alone. Animation, uh, mode you want to make sure it's on video input this part is where you're going to put the link of the video and the way you get the link is you open this folder right here double click on this folder i came popped up in the right for some reason uh and then you upload the video uh i'm going to upload this one open portal it's the video that i had already done so that's going to be uploading and as that's uploading i will actually explain what I recommend when it comes to videos that you should upload. And also make sure the video matches this, uh, these dimensions and these pixels. So when it comes to videos, I would recommend that you go into After Effects, put the clip that you want to generate, and then use the roto brush. And this is, this is really the secret sauce, you know? This is the secret sauce right here. You get the roto brush and you essentially remove the background. If you use, uh, if you're not familiar with uh, roto brushing, uh, you can Google that on a separate video. But essentially, what I do is I remove the background. So once you roto brush it and you remove the background, this would this is pretty much you're getting just the image, none none of the background. The problem with also running it with the background like this is that it will start to just mesh everything together and it won't look as clean and so i recommend you you if you have like a plain background then maybe that works like a white background or something but if you don't i would just run it like this and then i would do another one with just the background so that you have one that's uh, generating AI for the background and then one that's just doing, uh, generating the AI for the person in front of the background. So I would recommend to do that because I think it just looks way better and you get way better results once you blend them together. Here's an example of the video I did. You can distinguish the person in the front and then the person and what's happening in the back. like. So I just ran the background by itself like this without anybody there. And then also with someone there in the front. So I think this was going to give you way cleaner results when you do it this way. I can go over more about how I mess around in After Effects to accomplish this on the next video. But for now, that's, I wanted to explain that. You can still run it with a background if you want just to get started and see what results you get. You get sometimes some really decent results, like you don't necessarily have to separate the background, but I believe you get cleaner results with, um, yeah, when you remove the background. And you gotta export it as a QuickTime file and with a transparency with it. Because if you just export it like without transparency, it will have a black, it will detect a, a black background and you don't want that, you want a transparent background. Yeah, now that that's uploaded, you come here, you find the video right here, open portal, right click, copy path, 
then you paste it to no not there you paste it to video and it path and there you go it's there extract each extract nth frame that's um pretty much if you have 24 frames it will really just generate 12 frames and then in after effects you can use something to make sure bring it back to 24 flames and make it look smooth i'll explain that in the next video anyways uh i leave this as is uh leave warp flow warp uh, i know that you can mess around with the flow blend and essentially it will affect how the prompt is generated onto the subject and uh, there's a great video that um, Common Sense made showing the different blend settings right here. So I would recommend you check that out. Uh, I don't mess with any of this. This is for 2D animations. I don't mess with that. Coherence, coherency settings is also very important. This essentially, it tells you right here what it is. Frame scale tries to guide the new frame to looking like the old one. A good default is 50, 1500. Uh, I go 5000, uh, we can go higher, I guess. Um, basically it tries to, it, the, hi the higher the number, the more it tries to be guided by the frames so that it's consistent throughout, you know, through the video. Typically, you know, most people I think want that unless they just want like, each frame to look super different from the from the last one. I think typically a higher number is good. The frame step skips, I believe it affects how much of the prompt is affected. Similar to um, the clips guidance scale. So I believe the higher the number, the more it will lean towards the prompt. The lower the number, the more it will lean towards what the video looks like. But it still doesn't look completely like the video. So. Maybe because it, ha it would have to be 100%, a uh, 0% if if that was the case, if it was just the video by its, without any effects at all. I don't mess with any of this. Here you have uh, cut IC POW. Don't know what that means, but essentially from what I understand, the higher the number, the more details you can have. But I think that also you will have longer processing times, so. I would try to start with low and then, you know, bump it up as, you know, you have more experience with this kind of stuff. And down here you have prompts. And this is what I was talking about earlier about um, essentially a description of what you want. Uh, a lot of people tend to start off with like a description of like something like a beautiful painting of an ocean, a beautiful painting. Uh, oil painting uh, by so-and-so artist that's like a famous artist or an artist uh, that you might find somewhere online who has a lot of uh, their work online and essentially it would try to mimic that um, the AI would try to grab from those things that you're describing and just try to create something different unique so a lot of people go with uh, this guy Greg Rakowski, they use him a lot because um, there's like the detail in all his work. I think a lot of people want to see a lot of detail with these AI generated stuff. Yeah, let me just put by, just to give an example by Greg Rakowski. It's not really his style <laughs> cyberpunk, but you know, let's see what it, what it, what it spits out. Um, and that's it. Uh, after this, close this up and then you run it. And this might take a while, depending on your video, what kind of video you put. As soon as that's done, sorry about that. Then you click on diffuse. It will start to process this and you'll start to see previews for it. Right here, I put every display rate 10. So once uh, it gets to every 10th uh, step, I believe, it will show me what it's doing. And at the beginning, you won't see much, it won't look very nice, but as it progresses, you start to see uh, they just get better and better, hopefully. Um, so that's the display rate. If you put a higher display rate, you won't see it, the changes as frequently, like right here. 
uh, it says 84. So every 10, like right there, you don't see any change. So once it reach, this is reaches 10, it's gonna show me where it's at. Like an example of where it's heading, you see? So that's 10. When it gets to 20, it's gonna show me another iteration. Uh, so that's what this does when you, when you put it at 10. Batches, I believe, doesn't have anything to do with video. I believe it's with 2D animation or uh, the other kind of animation that doesn't involve video. And uh, resume run is super important if, you, for some reason, this crashes and you need you stopped at, like right here shows you how many frames it's gonna do, 22, 222, that's a lot. Um, we're not gonna do all that for this. It's, uh, so let's say it stops at 100 and it crashes. So you would come here to resume. You would say resume number, which is starts off with zero. And then uh, that's pretty much the iter like the version that you're doing at the moment. Um, and then at what frame, uh, let's say you put 100 uh, because it stopped at a at 100 and you want to continue from 100. So then you press click the resume button and then you press to run it. If for some reason you're not liking the results you're getting, uh, you can stop this, go into settings, make the changes you wanna make, change the prompt description if you like, change something, and then either, if you just make changes to one thing like here, just click this play button and then you can run it. Or if you made multiple changes, you can just close this tab and just press play here and it runs everything that way you don't have to press one at a time and then uh it will start to generate uh this and just more and more you'll start to see uh the direction it's heading to see where this is stored you go to your google drive in your google drive you will already see an ai folder that was created you go into there you go into disco diffusion image out and you'll see a folder with the name that you created for it. In this case, uh, I believe we called it test YouTube. Yes. So here's one of the images that it already generated. And it will continue to generate them. And this is where they'll be saved. From here, you can go into After Effects. So from there, you import every frame, for example, right here. You have all the frames here that you, whatever folder you put it in, you saved it to, uh, and you have it all numbered. And you click on the first one, you press PNG sequence, import, it will import the sequence right here. And I just make it fit to the frame. And essentially, it will save it like this. And as you might notice that it's really fast, faster than the original clip. So you want to change the speed. I tend to go 150 and I feel like 150 is like around the normal speed. Since it's generated only every two frames, it looks kind of like stuttery. Like it doesn't look like smooth. And this can be the effect that you desire. Or if you want it to be a lot smoother, you uh, go to here to the frame blending click on it twice until you see this little arrow and then it blends it smooth like butter. One thing I also advice I want to give you when you are shooting video, if you're the one shooting the video or if you're looking for stuff online, notice how right here, this image is like consistent, but the moment that she turns her head, things switch up and it's not as consistent or Look at, you see that? You see how things start to blur out? Like right there, it looks very detailed, a lot of things going on, but then it blurs out. Like she moved her body there and look at all this right here. It looks all blurry. Um, also, she has a plain sweater. If she had like a jacket with a lot of intricate details on there, this would work so much better. The more stuff that the AI sees, the more in my experience, uh, what I've noticed is that the more details you can find, like if you're wearing stuff with a lot of details, the AI works with that. So I would shoot stuff. If I were to shoot this again, I would shoot it with, uh, I would have her wear like a jacket with uh, 
just like a jean jacket or something with a lot of little details on it. Um, I think I would have gotten way better results and, uh, and not have her move her head as much because that's what causes like these blur effects uh, and doesn't make it look as cool. Um, but yeah, also it really does try to detect faces when you have uh, the video up close like this. Um, if you're far away, it won't, it, it's not as good at detecting faces. And also if it's, if, if uh, the image is blurred, it doesn't do so well. So uh, it just depends on what you're, what you're trying to accomplish. Um, if you're trying to do something like that's up close like this, then, you know, just you'll get different results to, to a video where you have the person person standing far away from the camera. I think a wide shot with and a place like a city place with there's so much detail behind you would give you some amazing results. If this crashes at any point, just you know where you're at, just look at your drive, your Google Drive, where's it at? See where, you, where it stopped, frame four, come here, resume, four. It also has the number, uh, which iteration, zero, zero. So make sure that here you put zero. If the if you stop this and you press play again, it will um, change uh, the, the next iterations to uh, one, and then it'll be one zero 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 one zero 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 one. And so that's when you come back here and you uh, change this to whatever iteration that is. Yeah. So that's this video. Uh, I will do another video. Uh, explaining what I do in After Effects and there's a lot of cool things you can do in After Effects to just You know use this in a more uh, unique way um, If you just needed this then you know, hopefully this was helpful if not uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I I know a lot of people were requesting for me to make a video and how I did this and uh, I just hope this was useful at least somewhat useful for people so yeah, the next video will be in After Effects and we will run through that and create some cool visuals with that. All right, peace.